have uh, Shrikas talk about uh, pivoting in a startup into a hardware business. So, we all keep talking about a lot of pivoting, so <laughs> you could just share yeah, the presentation to talk about it, but I'll just quickly talk about uh, who we are, what we did, and how we uh, engaged in this world. Uh, we are a product, uh, my name is Chandrasekhar, uh, I work for Axiom Consulting. Uh, we are a product design, product engineering and innovation firm. So we work with uh, large corporations, some of them have talked about those questions here, I can help you out there as well. We work with PNG, Unilever, a uh, lot of other uh, CPG customers. Uh, we started out being an automotive design, uh, product design firm. Uh, in the first three years, uh, we did that uh, because we all, the founding team came from the automotive engineering and design area. And uh, the first pivot was uh, three years uh, into our existence. And that pivot was essentially because the automotive uh, field itself was going through ups and downs. And uh, for a company our size uh, to go or ride that ups and downs was very difficult. So we looked at other verticals and uh, uh, CPG or FMCG as some call it is, is something that we started working with. So, uh, what we did was we brought in the deep science and engineering that the automotive product development brings in the rigor and the engineering into uh, areas where they were not applied, where there was a lot of need but they was not applied because if you look at these companies, they invest a lot of R&D dollars in the chemical composition of their product in the sense that if someone is designing a shampoo, they invest a lot of work in designing the shampoo itself. But the shampoo delivery system, whether it's a package or a dispenser or things that go into uh, sachet or whatever the package that it gets delivered in was, was not their core. So that's where we came in, where there was unaddressed or unaddressed area where we could bring in our deep science and then develop that. So uh, which sort of gave us, uh, uh, it was a very successful pivot early on. Uh, when I say early on, from 2001 to now, we are already 15 years in the business. So after the fourth year, we were uh, into a, a business pivot and uh, it worked great for us because uh, uh, we had one company which bet on us, which was PNG. Uh, we were about eight people when they came in. Uh, uh, the PNG team itself grew to 40 uh, in a period of three three years. And then we started doing uh, a very niche work with them. Uh, this was niche because, again, they were all focused on the contents of the package. Uh, whether it's a coffee powder or a shampoo, they were still focused on what is inside. And we, we came in to address their needs on the outside. Uh, even a, a gram or two grams shaved out of a, a bottle would mean a lot of uh, savings overall because they make millions of bottles, right? So those were the areas that we were playing in. Uh, in the last uh, three or four years, we have started to look at the knowledge that we have gained accompanying these companies through their product journeys. Uh, whether it's in the process or in the product development. When I say process, things like what happens inside the plant when a bottle is conveying on a bed or when something is being capped, all of this is happening inside the factory. And there is a lot of data that you could pick up from all of these uh, processes. Today, uh, an experienced manufacturing person makes a decision on whether the bottle can be run on a line for X speed, which means that your production rate is capped at X because beyond which the speed, the conveyor may not take it. But all of this is uh, more a dark art than science. So what we bring to the table is using uh, scientific methodologies, using uh, many of the hardware systems, whether today fancily called IoT or uh, uh, many other uh, analytics based approaches. And that's what we bring in. We pull in data, we pull in uh, analytic systems and then be able to address many of these issues through application of science. And this has been going on in the auto industry for a while. What it brought in is that science applied to a different field. 
Uh, so we didn't re we didn't invent anything new here. So it was more a reapplication. And uh, uh, what worked for us is, uh, I would say two things. Uh, Naveen talked about focusing on the customer. That was the key. What we also did was invest heavily on depth of technology. So it's not uh, something that we had at a superfluous level where uh, we looked at technology and that could be reapplied and then we learn on the way. What we brought in was uh, a lot of uh, skunk works inside our own labs, uh, invest heavily and bring and fine tune that technology and then reapplied it on the customer uh, problems. So it was very key to understand at both ends, to look at uh, what the customer wants and look at what is the best in technology can offer to address that particular uh, customer need. So uh, that's where uh, I wanted to share on, on that particular front. And we continue to uh, do that. Uh, one of the things we also have in a way uh, uh, struggled is to look at the balance between the uh, customer programs or projects that we work on and the products that we are developing. Many of the things that I talked about are all internal products that we have developed and branded as well. So there are products that we go as a pre-packaged software that, or a hardware platform. We take it in front of the customer and then customize to the uh, needs of the customer. So uh, I would also be happy to learn from others on how they have successfully uh, straddled both the consulting and the product Piece, and then uh, get a sense for where we could do uh, more successfully. Thank you. Uh, open to questions. I probably did faster than five minutes. No, no, no. <laughs> well, maybe I could just uh, try to uh, get it from uh, the moment you talk about investing heavily in R&D and a lot of startups are not for me. I didn't mean money. It's time and effort. No, and even that is a bit heavy, right? Yeah. So can you share your early days, right? Maybe 10 years, 12 years back then. Okay. So uh, uh, early day story is very sad. So. Yeah. Uh, I didn't want to. Uh, it's not a more from the pivoting point of view. <laughs> yeah, right. Because, that, that is something yeah, yeah, we had a term sheet for uh, close to 2 million. The VC pulled out because it was 2001 and things went haywire after the 9 uh, 11. And uh, we sort of bootstrapped, completely bootstrapped. The first three years were really hard, no salary, a typical bootstrap uh, setup. Uh, we did. Well, because we had some contacts that we had in the auto industry and did many Indian projects. Uh, post those four years, our percentage of Indian revenue would be like 10 to 15 percent. Before that, it was totally from within India. And we did things that uh, what the customers would do but would not have time or investment or money to do it. And for example, if you look at an auto show, most of you would have looked at it. There is a glitchy model that is put out there, which again is not in the uh, roadmap of the customer's R&D team. So they don't have hands to build those. Those are the things that come to people like us. So we were sort of right time, right place for that and start off, uh, started off doing that work. So once you do two or three such uh, initiatives, that brings in the momentum to take on the uh, bigger projects. So we did large vehicle programs after that, which means right from uh, industrial design, uh, going into detailed engineering design, which is chassis, body, everything to be designed, uh, going into simulations and then taking into ready for manufacturing. So we do the full thing uh, for people who did not have R&D teams to invest on a side project. So that's where we started. One beautiful thing is how quickly we'll outgrow all our problems in life. Are you still bootstrapped or were there are investors? Uh, we had uh, the investors and we bought them over. Now we are on our own. We had should be on our own. So, that's for the second book. Yeah. <laughs> so the second question is, Yeah. Is it a good idea to bootstrap or should we be approaching so much for funding and you know? No, there is pros and cons in all of this. I would say the first three years, 
In retrospect, the first three years, uh, we probably would have done differently, taken a different uh, takeoff, if you will. But I don't know that. I mean, uh, if I look back, we did really good with the minimal resources that we had. The and the stopping. fact that we have lasted 15 years yeah, yeah. with nothing to start with in itself a testimony, I would say. So you don't have to get someone else's money. Yeah. We we had nothing as well. Well, because actually, was in the business. Actually, you you can actually do business without having to work. With all due respect, in fact, he would have been. Yeah, he, I think he. Uh, it's not the first time I've heard him. He hints yeah. those things in his talks. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, he's better known as Chandra, but old habits. Yeah. <laughs>